Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1400, part two. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1400, we saw how to conditionally format the rows when a particular record had enrollment less than 15. Name of the class did not contain introduction, and the department was not in this list of departments. And below the video, 1,400, Dean Bailiff and Bill Sizzes posted some great solutions for doing this. Now, back in 1,400, this is the formula that was used, and it followed straight logic. Right? We used the AND because all three conditions had to be met. We were searching for a partial text, and we were interested in whether the record did not contain it, so we used is error. And then we were searching for a particular department within a list, so we used match to check if an item is in the list. And since the logical question was, is the department not in this list, we were interested in the error that match generated, so we used is error. Now that follows the straight logic. But check this out. Dean Bailiff said, we could do the same thing with the count ifs formula. Now, the idea here is that we have one, two, three logical tests. If we were to use equals count ifs, well, there's criteria range criteria. And if we comma, we could check all the way out to a third condition. Now, the trick here is that Normally, we use criteria range. We use a whole column. We're going to use a single cell. And in that way, when all three conditions are met, we'll get a count of one. Now, I like the idea of using count ifs instead of the and, match, is there, search. And my hunch is that it will probably calculate faster. But at the end, we will time each one of the formulas to see which one is the fastest. Now, that is important because guess what? When you apply conditional formatting with a logical formula, every single cell behind the scenes gets that formula. And conditional formatting is volatile, meaning it recalculates often when you're doing things in the spreadsheet. So which formula is faster will be important on a large data set. Now let's see this awesome count ifs formula here. Criteria range. Well, our first test is we need to check that number against the enrollment. Now remember the way conditional formatting works is we're going to build the formula over here, copy it over and down in a parallel range that's the same size as this over here. So because that formula is going to be in the dialog box for conditional formatting in that cell and then copied over in memory, every cell in this row needs to check enrollment. So we have to hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the column but not the row. Notice 17 isn't locked. So when the formula is copied down, it will move to 18, which will get us our 4 for the next record, comma. Now the criteria is, in double quotes, I need to ask the question, hey, enrollment number, are you less than, in double quote, and I need to join it to our hurdle for enrollment. Now that needs to be locked in all directions, so I hit F4 once. Now that's our first condition comma. Criteria range, notice we're selecting a single cell. This is so cool. But we'll still get a count of either 1 or 0, right? When they're all met, we'll get a count of 1. When they're not, it'll be a count of 0. Now, that has to be locked with the F4 1, 2, 3 times, comma. Now, this is going to get a little tricky here because we need to ask the question, does that name not contain this? So in the criteria 2, I'm going to have to put in double quotes the operator for not, which is less than, greater than, and double quotes. But now I need to, since I'm asking the question, does it not contain this, I need to wrap an asterisk before and after introduction. Now, an asterisk is a wild card. So I'm going to backspace because the asterisk has to go on the left side of that cell reference and the right side. Now, the asterisk wild card represents 
zero or more characters. Now I end double quote, and I have to join it to the introduction. Now on the other side of introduction, ampersand, and then in double quotes are wild card. Now we can click on criteria two, and oh, look at that. It didn't get all of it, so I'm going to hold Shift and click at the end. I want to hit the F9 key to evaluate this. Now it says, does the cell D17 not contain introduction either by itself or with any number of characters on either side. Control Z. Now we come to the end, comma, criteria range. That is the department, F4 key, one, two, three times, comma. Criteria, well, we need our does it not equal, so in double quotes, and then we join it to the first department, F4 to lock it in all directions, comma. Criteria range four. Wow, so we have four here. Still checking the department, F4 key three times, comma, in double quotes, not, and then join it to our next department, F4 to lock it in all directions. Now, point number one, if we had a huge list here, it would be more efficient to use match than to string out many different conditions and criteria. But that's it for our situation where we have just two departments, close parentheses, control enter. OK, so this row does not match all three conditions. But when I copy it down, there's the patterns, not of trues and falses, but instantly I see there is a problem. I'm going to go to the last cell and hit F2. Ah, look at that. I'm looking over here. Everything should be locked down over here, and it's not, so I forgot. Escape, come to the top cell, F2, and there it is. I'm going to click with my cursor, F4. Control Enter, copy it to the side, double click and send it down. And now I should see my patterns, not of trues and falses, but of ones and zeros. If I come to the last cell in F2, there it is. I'm checking all of the cell references. Now we're going to copy F2 in edit mode, the entire formula, Control C, Escape. Now I highlight the entire range. I copied it from the upper left, so the active cell has to be the upper left. Home, conditional formatting, new rule, or I can use the keyboard Alt-H-L-N. Now this dialog box comes up. I can either click Use Formula to determine which cells to format or hit Page Down. Now I can click in the text box for format values where this formula is true or hit Tab. Now I control V, click the format. You can do any formatting you want. I'm just going to use yellow. Click OK, click OK. And there it is working. If I change this up here to 28, look at that. Now this row meets all three conditions. Control Z. Now remember, that formula is in every cell sitting in memory. So later we'll come back and time this. Now let's go over to the sheet 1401. Really, these should all be 14, but it's listed as 1401. All right, our second formula comes from Bill Scissors. Now anytime we have three conditions and all three conditions must be met, we can use the AND function, of course. But the equivalent math operator for an AND logical test where all the tests have to be true is multiplication. Similarly, for OR, the equivalent math operation would be plus. Now, since multiplication can be used, let's just build the logical test. Let's just build the logical test inside the product function. Now, product will take number one, two, three, and multiply them. Only when all three conditions are met will we get one times one times one, which will result in one. Now, the first test. I simply click on Enrollment, F4 three times. And we're going to do not comma to get to the criteria, but a direct comparative operator. So I say, are you less than the hurdle? F4 to lock it in all directions, comma. Now, for the second logical test, remember, this cannot contain this. But watch what Bill Sisses did. He said, well, OK, I'm going to use the substitute function, the text I want to look at to then substitute something into that text string is going to be the name of the class, and F4 three times, comma. The text I'm going to be looking for is introduction, and F4 to lock it in all directions, comma. 
And watch this. When it finds introduction in the text, we're going to remove it by putting double quote, double quote. So substitute is going to try and find introduction within that text string. And it's going to substitute in double quote, double quote, which will just remove it. Close parentheses. Now, if we think about substitute right here, it's not going to change it at all. Business statistics will be remain business statistics. But when it gets down to introduction to business, now the actual content of the cell, introduction to business, will be transformed in the formula to space to space business. So what did Bill Scissors do? He said, hey, take that and ask the question, are you equal to this? Remember, we're interested in, does it not contain introduction? Well, since substitute won't change that, and we're asking the question, are you equal to this? This will come out true, which says it does not contain it. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. That is a beautiful logical structure to sort of indirectly get out that not condition, comma. And now I'm going to change up actually how Bill Scissors did it. He did an array formula, in essence, and used the sum and the not. The inside part of what he did is he said, here's the list, and I'm going to lock it in all direction. And I'm going to ask the question, are you any of you in that list equal to business department? And we have to use the F4 key to lock it on the column, but not the row. Now, if I highlight this in F9, it is returning an array. And false, false means neither one of these departments are equal to this department. Control Z. Now, I'm interested in when both of those logical tests come out false, which really needs to be a true. So I'm going to use the construction for none of the logical tests have been met. I'm going to use the OR function, which guess what? When OR sees both falses, it returns a false. And then I'm going to convert it to a true by using the NOT function. Now, Bill Sizzes had a double negative and a sum, and then use not. All right, close parentheses on the not. Close parentheses on product. Now, this is an array formula. So when I enter this just as enter, it gives me a value error, F2, because that's a direct operator on not a single item and a single item, but an array of items. So in order to get this formula to work, we have to tell Excel to calculate this as an array formula. And the way we do that is by entering the formula with Control, Shift, and Enter. Immediately, when we enter an array formula with Control, Shift, Enter, you go up to the formula bar and verify that those curly brackets have been put in. Those are automatically put in by Excel, and they tell you Hey, Excel understood this is supposed to be calculated as an array calculation. Now I'm going to copy this to the side and then down. Go to the last cell, F2. Looks like all the cell references are working. Now the cool thing about this is that when you copy and paste this into the dialog box, we don't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. The dialog box will just understand and calculate it correctly. F2, and I'm going to copy this in edit mode, Control C. And very importantly, I'm going to use Escape instead of Enter, because I want to retain that Control Shift Enter. Escape always reverts back to whatever was in the cell before you put it in edit mode. Now I'm going to highlight the range, active cell in the upper left corner, Alt H L N, page down, tab, Control V. No Control Shift Enter. Add some formatting, click OK, click OK, and look at that. Now, my guess is that that will take longer because it's doing an array formula. But again, we'll time these at the end. Now, the final solution comes from Dusty at Highline College. And he said, hey, whenever I do conditional format, I just add an extra column with the true or false. Now, the pitfall here is sometimes you cannot do this. So then you have to use one of these other solutions. But guess what? If we can do our formula in a single column, and then when we highlight this, we simply point our formula to that helper column, then we don't have the big, huge formula in every cell in memory. So this probably will be the fastest way. Helper and Enter. Now, we can use whichever one at the end we'll time it. I'm going to use the AND and simulate the logic from the last one. We're going to say, hey, enrollment. And guess what? 
it's a relative cell reference. Are you less than this hurdle up here? And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. The second logical test, last video we used search. Anytime we're searching for partial text, we could say, hey, the find text, please find introduction. F4 to lock it in all directions, comma, within this right here as a relative cell reference. Now close parentheses, search will return the position in the text string. For example, down here, because it found introduction as in the first position counting the characters, it would return a 1. So search is going to return a number or an error. And we're interested in when it's an error, because we want to say when it does not contain introduction. So we have to wrap is error, which will work for us, close parentheses. So that's the second logical test, comma. We need to check whether this item is in this list. So an efficient way to do this, especially for a large data set, is to use the match function. Hey, I'm going to search for that relative cell reference, a department, comma, within this list, F4 to lock it, comma. We're doing exact match. We're looking exactly for BUSN. Close parentheses. This returns the relative position of the item in the list, either a number or when it doesn't find it, it returns an error. So we'll use is error again. Close parentheses. And that, in the end, is the third logical test. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. So there's our true, true F2 down here somewhere. Cell reference is looking good. Now we simply highlight the range, Alt, H, L, N, page down, tab. And we need to check for each row whether the helper column, and notice I'm building it here, so by default it shows up as absolute. So I hit the F4 key once and twice to lock the column. Are you equal to true? That's going to be a much smaller formula in every single cell. The big heavy lifting formula is in a single column. We can format this however we want. Click OK, click OK, and boom, there we go. All right, let's go time. And you can download Exometric 1400 Part 2 Timing. All right, so I created a data set here, Control Down Arrow. It's only about 6,000 rows, Control Home. I created the AND formula, the count ifs the product over here, and then two helper columns, AND and count ifs. And then I installed Charles Williams. He's an Excel MVP. I installed his VBA code to time, and I have this time button. Now what I did is I actually created all the formulas timed, created all the formulas timed, and then highlighted the two helper columns and timed them. And of course, the helper column was the fastest. I was surprised it was the AND. Count ifs helper column was second place, but it took 26% longer. And here's the crazy thing. The array formula was the third fastest. And amongst the formulas we pasted into the dialog box, it was the fastest. Now, I did run into an interesting problem, and I'm not sure why. If I highlight this whole range, Control Asterisk, and click this Time button, Notice it says 0 0.06039. So it took just as long as that timing in seconds suggests. But watch what happens when I do this to the products. I'm going to highlight everything, Control Asterisk. And I click this, and it just goes on and on. And I hit the Pause button so you don't have to watch this. And then it comes back on, and it reports 0 0.04956. Well, that actual time right there is faster than the AND or the count ifs. But I'm suspicious about the results because it shouldn't have taken that long. But nevertheless, so product AND was the second fastest. And to my total surprise, count ifs was the longest. Now, this kind of thing only matters on a large data set. But guess what? Lots of people have. Lots of data, lots of formulas, array formulas, and lots of conditional formatting. So this could add up. All right, that was a lot of fun. And it's awesome to hang out on our online Excel team with Dean, Bill Sizzes, and Dusty. All right, we'll see you next video.